Welcome back, ladies. No gents today. This set last session for this room, Sarah Hunter, Business Growth Strategies. Let's welcome Sarah. Thanks very much. Um, I'm going to be on task uh, this afternoon uh, with some practical sort of tools and and strategies to think about about growth. I've got a, a background in corporate veterinary pharmaceuticals and then as a private consultant and most recently as a business advisor, a business facilitator with the um, Australian um, government's Department of Industry Entrepreneurs Program. So that's, that's what I, w I work with. Um, I'm going to assume that we've already got the basics of your business in place. So you have the purpose, you have the playground, you know what you're doing, you know what your competitive advantage is, um, and you know how to compete with uh, the, in, in the environment that you're working in at the moment. You know what the structure of your business is. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, you've got all of those things pinned down absolutely, but as you've heard um, quite a few times today, it's really useful to know in your mind and in your heart what those things are, whether it's just when you're recruiting, whether it's when you're talking to the media about your business, whether it's um, just communicating in those tiny moments that we have to communicate the essence of what we do. So once you've got those things in place, once you've got, you know, got an understanding, you're ready to activate your growth um, strategy. And growth is wonderful, growth is fabulous, nice problem to have, um, but unmanaged and unfettered growth can often mean that you are, you know, working very hard on lots of things and you tend to then have to come back and, and sort of back engineer your business because you've gone in, in you know, all sorts of directions. And sometimes that's really useful. But what is also very useful is to um, just gauge what are the options for growth. Take hold of that, manage that, and, and know where you're going you know, with, with intention and purpose. So what I'm going to share with you comes out of a, a Harvard Business Review article called Strategy for Startups. And it's just a process of thinking about your business and um, how you engage with your ecosystem. So the first thing, and you can you know, think about this in the context of the, your own business, the first thing to think about is, what's your attitude towards innovation? Um, are you going to be, um, you want full control of what you develop and, and you know, whatever is created in your business? Or are you more um, interested in really um, going hard and going fast? Not necessarily owning, um, but just getting stuff out there. So if you've got a control sort of feel for your business, then you will probably take steps to um, protect your intellectual property. You, you want to you know, own what it is that you do and develop. You don't want really to, to share it because that's you know, part of your um, competitive advantage. Um, and that takes resources. So um, just a quick show of hands, um, any businesses that have unlimited resources of time and money to spend? <laughs> okay, so in business, in life, probably as well, I would say, you're, you're very rarely in business making a decision between a really, really great idea and a really rubbish idea. You're not doing that. You're trying to make decisions between sometimes two really valid options, you know, good ideas, which one? You can't fund them both, you can't pursue them both. So this is a way of working out, well, am I prepared to put a lot of resources into this strategy, this growth strategy? And if you are, then this may well be the, the place to go. So it's, um, you, you protect your IP, you, um, means that you exclude competition, but it just takes you a bit more time and money to, to get going on it. Compared with a strategy where you want to just be quick to market, in that case, you don't have to worry about the IP, but execution is everything. You just keep going because you're, um, you know, you're there to just do it, do it quickly. Um, 
more threats, but you can iterate as well quite fast. So you can sort of make changes on the way. The other thing that is worth thinking about is what's your attitude towards your competition? Are you in a collaborative kind of mode? And, and I guess that's what we've heard a lot of today. Um, or are you wanting to be competitive? And again, that will give you a bit of a sense of um, what you're going to have to focus on, what um, is a priority for you. So if you're going to collaborate, then um, there are probably established players in your market already, probably quite big ones. Um, you get to leverage the size that they have, um, but you also have a bit of an imbalance of power around you know, something that you bring to the table. It may be if they're quite big and quite powerful, they just go, thank you, that will be ours now, and, and off you go. Um, on the other side, if you're going to compete directly, then you've got really full control. Um, but you also have a resource imbalance because you may have much larger competitors who um, are just much better resourced. So you've got to outwit them really rather than out muscle them or out sort of um, sort of PR them in the in the marketplace. You know, you've just got to um, be fast. So there's a you know there's a thought process around um, how you go about your growth. And it does come back to your, the way you like to do things. You know, you could probably do a bit of a, an analysis of your business and work out that this might be the best way for it, like this is the most sensible way. But if that doesn't really resonate with the way you like to do business as well, you'll be pulling against it all the time. You know, it just won't feel like you. So what's really useful is to work through these scenarios for your business um, and just think about what would happen if that's the way you proceeded. So for example, if you were um, wanting a lot of control and um, to yet to collaborate, you, you need to like be right on board with your legals and your contracts because your, your value is in what you own um, and what you know. So, you know, that's a really important place, but it means you're the ideas factory. And um, if you recognise a couple of those brands that I've put up there, uh, Dolby is a, sort of a, a sound system thing which you'll find in just about every film um, music system. You know, it's, it's a, a tiny piece of, um, of IP and um, know-how which is in everything in the industry, but it is not um, doing it itself. It's a bit of an Intel inside type of, of model. Um, Harry Potter is another example and licensing, you know, it's, it's classic licensing. It's, this is us um, and we will let you have a little bit of this to proceed with and, you know, make your, um, you know, wand factory or your, or your theme park or your, um, happy Meal, you know. So that's that's basically what they have to sell. It's that IP. If you are in the opposite quadrant of that, so you want to compete and you also want to execute fast, then the key to this one is finding a niche because you can't sort of be everywhere. It's not the high resource thing. So what's important is to find a niche that you can work with very tightly. Um, so if you think about the market that you operate in, is there a subset in that market? Is there a small group of customers um, who, are, who are quite aligned, who have got the same need, and most importantly, have the same unmet need? Because if you can go really hard and really effectively with that group of customers, then um, you know you can scale quite fast and you can be very agile because you know you're hitting exactly what they need and once they like it, love it, use it, recommend it, then you find uh, that you expand your scope and then suddenly that's what every let's not say everybody that's what many people that you're trying to attract will like. So the the key to that is you play you run your own race. Um, and you do it fast and you do it with a niche that you know will be able to grow. So 
Um, Rent the Runway is one of those, and that is one which uh, provides um, sort of high fashion um, and designer uh, clothing, but you can rent it rather than buy it. So that's a that's a niche uh, that they've identified of mostly women who would like to have um, a larger wardrobe ac- you know access uh, than they can afford to buy. So they subscribe to that and and off it goes. And, and so they had to iterate very fast to create something for this niche and, and grow that way. Netflix is another example on, on this, uh, of this type of, of growth strategy. So again, think about in your industry um, or in your market of customers, what are the niche groups that you've got there? You know, are, is that something that you could really focus on and grow? And does that become your growth strategy, its focus? It's fast, you keep control of it, and you know you, you kind of know what you're doing there. The third, um, the third option is to have the control, you know, have the, um, the, the collaboration um, mindset, um, but also not be so big on the control piece. So you're happy to execute and have execution as your key strength. Um, but you don't need to own it all the way through. You actually become an a almost indispensable part of the value chain of a um, you know a, of, a, of a particular area, and that's that's what your your growth strategy is. You just become attractive to any organisation that is looking for that sort of thing. Now there are two um, really interesting examples here. Um, who knows who PayPal is? Yeah, everyone knows who PayPal is. So PayPal slots in there as a way of of transacting for a purchase. Um, started off with eBay and now everywhere. Who knows who Foxconn is? Not so many. So Foxconn is one of the only organisations in the world that can manufacture at volume and quality and in the time frames required by firms like Apple. So the quality, the, the, the value that it brings is if, if Apple or another huge sort of volume um, tech company wants to bring something out worldwide, they need to have partners who will do it, you know, without question and, you know, with, with no, uh, well, you know, we'll try to get it there Tuesday next month type of thing. So, so what Fox got... What Foxconn brings is they manufacture, they manufacture well, they manufacture at volume, and they're not there to be manufactured for anyone. They're there to be a manufacturer for just those organisations for whom that is critical to their value proposition. So they become part of a chain, and that's what they bring. They bring the knowledge, they bring the expertise, they probably do a lot of work on, on sort of manufacturing processes and innovation there, and that's, that's where they sit. So if you have a place in a value chain which is hard to replicate, highly expert, and, um, and you know, really important to, I would say a range of players. I don't think it's ever a great thing to have only one or two customers and certainly not one or two big customers um, and that's all. Um, you know, that could be where you sit and that could be your growth strategy. So the final one, um, and not for the faint hearted because this is definitely the highest risk one, is you control it all and you compete with everyone. So you basically set up your own platform, you, you dictate how it operates, you dictate the terms, uh, you protect your IP no matter what, and you go you know, in this big new space that um, Airbnb, Facebook, Meta um, have gone and, they, and, and totally recreate that. Um, so this is, a, this is an option, this is, this is a growth strategy definitely and, and they beat many competitors to this, this space that they're in now. It didn't just happen overnight. Um, but it's very resource heavy um, and you really have to execute very well. So again, it's another option. So you've got 
four places where you can sit and think about your business, think about how you sit in those in those quadrants, what you what what that makes you feel like, what it would look like for your business. So actually start to to map out, well, if we were following this strategy, what would we what would we do? You know, who would we partner with? Who, what it, what's the thing that we do that nobody else can do? And this doesn't have to be global. You know, it can still be it's the best in, you know, the Blue Mountains and Surrounds or it's the best in Greater Sydney or it's the, you know, we're the only one within a day's march that, you know, that can do that. I mean, that, that can help in the first instance to work out where that sits. Um, it also helps to sort of tag back to your purpose and go, okay, well, this growth strategy is also aligned with what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve, how we're trying to get there. And then you, um, you, you can sort of scenario plan what those four would look like for your business. And that starts to get you to where you think the best option might lie for you. And you might have two, you know, there could be two equally valid ones. And I guess the key is pick the one that you want to drive forward on. You can maybe always double back on the other as well if that works, um, but it's hard to be running two big growth strategies at once. So it's better to know which one you know, you're really focusing on because that will help align how you do what you do and how you talk about your business. So these uh, have um, some keys and some kind of uh, personas, I suppose, that, that are attached to them. Uh, just as a, as a bit of a shorthand, you either have the intellectual property key to, to what you do, um, you're the architectural builder, builder of platforms, builder of new experiences, um, the disruptor, um, you, disruption is your thing and that's how you kind of grow your business and um, you fit into the value chain and you just provide a uh, uh, an expert and, and highly valuable piece to a value chain that leads to a, an end c consumer or customer. And it, it also helps if therefore you're not looking at the customer solely as who you sell your product or service to, you're looking at who's the user, what's the user. If you've got a, a sort of common user uh, sort of vision in your head, then that's the sort of situation where this works best. So some thoughts, um, what, what would you think? Do you think you're a, uh, a Harry Potter or a Foxconn or a Netflix or an Airbnb? Do you know what sort of questions you'd start to ask yourself about your business? Has anyone got some thoughts about where they might fit or what they might start to ask about how do we even think about this in terms of our business? Who, who your customers are is a good start, Brenda. So, like I'm in a niche with, in life living, menopause. A big niche. Uh, well, let's say, I, I don't know, I think it's a big segment but probably the ones who are aware of something they'd like to do about it could be niche. But then I've got a service that is all my IP. Mm -hmm. So which one am I? So it's you've got a niche market but and you've also got IP and which one of those two it is I guess you're looking at the IP element up the top which is the if, if you want to control control it all and kind of license or something like that. But you could also fit into the collaborate space, the value chain space, because what you bring could add a huge amount of value to a bigger uh, program type thing or a bigger offer that, and, and certainly the niche element of it could be, well, nobody else is talking about this, so you know, here that fits. But, but it's, it, it's worth doing all the, the versions and just thinking out and, and do go back to the, um, to the HBR article, um, Strategy for Startups, because it's got some really good working through and some, um, some notes and just get in touch with me if you, if you need it. 
Um, but if you kind of work out that scenario of, um, okay, who would I partner with? Who are the customers? What would this look like? If we were going to go fast and iterate as a hustler, what would we have to do? Um, and then you can basically compare the four. Okay, I've worked these through. Um, which of them do I feel like doing? You know, which of them seems to be the, the one that most fits? Right, that's, that's where we'll go. And so you, you, might, you might find that you learn a lot about your business and, and um, its opportunities just by doing the exercise of where do we fit on that, on that continuum. Anyone else got some thoughts? Yep. If, if your risk profile was um, more around that execute and, you know, try things, then definitely you'd be down, you know, you'd just want to, okay, well, we'll give this a go and see what sticks. We'll, you know, we'll see. And that's very much that hustler, that disruptor. And in, but if you do it strategically, you might want to just plan out, okay, well, we've got three niche areas that we could hustle in. What might those look like? But you're probably not going to go, dang it, you know, we'll just go the full, you know, own all our IP, control everything thing. So you'll probably find that you're somewhere in that, in that spot. Um, interestingly, Uber, um, you know, classic disruptor, I, I guess one of the things that is interesting now is they're sort of over on the collaborator space because of, you know, Uber Eats and so forth because they didn't protect enough IP not to be copied three, four, five times. So... Um, you know, you just think about what the consequences might be as well and whether, um, you know, whether that's for me or whether I want to just go with the flow. You might have really loved your salaried job as well and the, the continuity of that. So a value chain thing where you've got upstream and downstream uh, sort of connections, that, that might be where you, where you go best and you collaborate and you bring your expertise to fit in with another couple of organizations and the way they deliver value to the same customer. Does that make sense? Yeah. So think about that. Um, think about what your, um, you know, what this compass means to you. And um, I th what I've found in business is you do it at some point. You do this strategizing, you do this thinking, you do this work, you do this learning, and you can either do it when you're way down the track and you've got to think back and you know kind of backtrack a bit and go oh gosh okay now let's see what we did there or you can think about it a bit in advance and go right I'm just going to stop right here and we'll give this a bit of thought and then we'll probably still make mistakes but we're kind of knowing what track we're going on so you do it anyway in arrears or in advance you know give give this uh, give this a go before you know growth kind of overtakes you and you don't have time to think. If you would like to go deeper on this and other sorts of things, um, I'm with the Entrepreneurs Program. Uh, we work in the um, Strengthening Business Service, which is for business owners in all the bushfire affected LGAs. So for me, it's Hawkesbury, Lithgow, um, Blue Mountains and Oberon. Um, and I've got uh, colleagues up and down the coast and in New South Wales, uh, in Victoria and in South Australia. So do feel free to connect with me and to come and, um, and see me if you want to talk more about it. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, they, they built a, a platform and they were awesome at what they were doing. But then 
they decided to grow and they kind of lost their way. At what point do you change direction? Is it like, you know, you can put a line in the sand and make that shift? How do you transist out of it? You sort of touched on it, I guess, a little bit, I guess, with the Uber example. Yeah, I think um, for, I mean, growth isn't, you just, <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> growth isn't just one time. So I think that there are those step change elements for an organisation as well. So it may have been that the platform piece was its first growth thing. And remember, this is designed for startups. So you're just going, we could go anywhere, where? But it still applies to businesses moving through life stages. So, you know, they might have had the platform piece and then gone, okay, for our next growth phase, you know, maybe it's the um, value chain piece. You know, maybe that's the thing. Maybe it's the intellectual property. Develop the platform and then license that. Yeah. That becomes your business. And getting people to buy into that, because that was the other challenge. They started to try and move and change things, but like the wheels fell off big time and the disparity at the debt level and then it cascaded through the organisation. So it's... Change management. That, yeah. Communication, transparency, communication, yeah. communication. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were. Yeah. No, that's it. You tell people where you're going and why. And why. Yeah. 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 yeah.